Hello, I'd like to introduce you to um, a first course on basic plasma physics. So first of all, we're going to look at the uh, idea of an electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is a key force in nature and it is actually the force that results in uh, magne an electri electrical attraction, repulsion and magnetic fields. And uh, the electromagnetic force holds materials together. So uh, it's, it, it's, it's what uh, maintains a solid as a solid so the attraction between the um, electrons in the solid and the ions which are positively charged holds the solid together um, as, as, a, as a crystal structure um, in a structured system like a crystal or any solid the binding energies that hold the system together are much greater than the ambient thermal energy so the ions inside the the lattice are moving, but the average energy of those ions is not sufficient to cause the crystal to break break up. Um, but if you make the solid hot enough, then the thermal energy of the ions, they start to rattle about inside the crystal, and eventually the crystal starts to break up. It decomposes, so uh, the crystal melts into a liquid and increase the energy of the uh, atoms or molecules in the liquid and they actually start to leave the liquid and uh, it begins to uh, form a gas and ultimately that gas would dissociate so if you had hydrogen H2 it would dissociate into, into hydrogen atoms um, and if there's enough energy in the system um, and the system's in thermal equilibrium then the electrons get to a certain uh, free electrons will get to a certain temperature that they start to ionize the atoms. So the electrons bump into the atoms uh, and create an ion electron pair. Um, so where you have one electron, the electron bumps into an atom, it knocks off an additional electron. Now you have two free electrons and you have uh, an atom, uh, an ionized atom, an ion, positive ion. But even in the plasma state, the electrons and ions are not completely free to travel wherever they want. When the density of the ionization is very low, they are free. But at some point, when there's enough uh, electrons um, and enough ions, they start to behave collectively. Uh, the electromagnetic force uh, of attraction between the positive and negative charges and the repelling force between uh, positive and positive or negative and negative charges, light charges, uh, start to exert forces on the ensemble. And such an assemblage, an assemblage is termed a plasma. So now if we look at uh, the idea of a temperature, temperature derives from a particular type of distribution called a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And this is the distribution you will achieve when you're in thermal equilibrium. Um, so if we look at electrons in thermal equilibrium, then we see um, a distribution that looks something like what we see on the screen. So basically it decays off, reaches a peak here at about uh, 2 or 3 EV and then decays off at higher energies. And this distribution has actually got a, a temperature of 3 EV. Now temperature is normally measured in Kelvin, uh, but for plasma physicists we normally talk about temperature in EVs. Uh, it's an electron volt. Uh, so an electron volt is um, the electronic charge E times um, a voltage. Uh, and it has slightly different units from temperature, uh, but Boltzmann's constant is a constant that uh, allows you to move from uh, a, a temperature in Kelvin to a temperature in electron volts. Uh, and also you need um, the electronic charge. Um, so what we see here is we see the number of electrons at each energy and for this 3 EV distribution we can see that um, the number of electrons is a maximum at about 3 or 4 EV and then drops off as we go to higher energies. Now in a in a gas uh, you would normally have an ionization cross-section. This is a made up cross-section here starting off at some 20 uh, electron volts rising up and then peaking around 30 uh, 30 electron volts. Now we can see that most of the electrons don't have enough energy to ionize the gas. So it takes about 20 EV 
for uh, this, this particular gas, this made up gas to be ionized. Um, so it's only electrons with energies, only electrons with energies above a certain value that can be ionized. And what I've done here is we've worked out here the, the overlap, if you like, the, the, the product of these two uh, integrated. So this is the, the probability of, 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 of electrons, probability the, of the electrons ionizing the gas. And we've multiplied it by 100 because it's actually a very low probability. It's around 0.012%. Um, and these are both normalized distributions. So if you integrate these di distributions, they add up to 1. So ionization then. Ionization occurs when... Um, so in any one second with those two distributions, there's a 0.012% probability that an electron will create a new ion and electron pair by bumping into a gas atom. The larger the value of P, the greater the likelihood of an ionization event happening. So the bigger the overlap of those two distributions. Uh, so if you make the electron temperature hotter, you get more electrons out near the ionization threshold. And so you increase the value of P. It's not necessary that all the atoms are ionized. So at a low pressure, say at one millionth of an atmosphere, that's a pressure just under one millitor, um, there would typically be about um, two ten to the 13 atoms per, per cc, or about 10 to the 19 atoms per meter cubed uh, at room temperature. Uh, so that's 10 to the 19 uh, atoms in a square meter of, of, of area or volume. Um, so if uh, only one millionth of, the, of that gas, only one in every million atoms is ionized, then the, at the ion density uh, and the electron density will be of the order of 10 to the 13. That's one millionth of 10 to the 19, the order of 10 to the 13 ions per cubic meter. Now that's a, a low density plasma, but it's still in most reasonably sized chambers would be a, a valid plasma. So it's important to understand that uh, it's not necessary um, for the atoms and the electrons to be in thermal equilibrium. So I said we have an electron temperature in thermal equilibrium of 3 eV. You would expect that the atoms would also have a temperature of 3 eV, but in most industrial applications and most terrestrial plasmas, most plasmas on Earth, that's actually not the case. So the electron temperature might be 3 eV, which is of the order of 30,000 Kelvin, but the gas atoms can be at room temperature, 0.02 eV. And so there's a very large difference very often between the electron temperature and the gas temperature. Uh, and this is one of the major advantages of plasmas in that the chemistry, which is determined by the electron energy, can be very rapid, you can have very, very rapid reaction rates. Um, so the overlap between the electrons and a partic any particular uh, cross-section like ionization or excitation uh, can, or dissociation can be very high, um, but the gas is cold. Uh, and that's very important for many, many applications. So we talk about two temperatures, or maybe even three temperatures in, a pla in a, an industrial plasma. We talk about the gas temperature and the electron temperature. And so, as I said, it's not uncommon to see in a low low pressure uh, argon plasma that you would have an electro electron temperature of 3 eV and a gas temperature of 0.02 eV. Now, plasmas are complex. I think you're already beginning to realize that to a certain degree. Um, now, you can have very complex bound systems, um, molecules, uh, like for example, a protein molecule can be very, very complex. But in plasma, the complexity tends to be different. It's a complexity over a, a large spatial area. So typically plasmas and industrial applications can be of the order of a meter across. Uh, and also they can be very complex in their temporal response. So sometimes people create continuous plasmas that are reasonably stable, but often plasmas are pulsed. They're driven by radio frequency or microwave fields. And so they can have magnetic fields internally. And so you can get very, very um, 
complex structures and modes, both in the spatial direction, but also in the time dimension. Since um, we normally uh, use uh, a, a fairly hot environment to create the plasma, uh, a lot of plasmas on terrestrial plasmas actually form in gases. So most plasmas are gas plasmas. It is possible to have um, plasmas in liquid, but it's usually in a gas phase within the liquid. And it's also possible to have plasma structures or crystal structures within the plasma, uh, with their dust plasma uh, particles uh, suspended in the plasma. Um, so we just re-emphasized in the fact that it's not necessary for all the gas or even a large fraction of the gas to be ionized. That's very, very small ionization fraction will do. In fact, people often refer to uh, flames as plasma, but very often the density of the electrons and ions in a flame is not high enough for them to really behave as plasmas. So a lot of flames are not actually plasmas, uh, although they do sometimes exhibit plasma behavior. Terrestrial plasmas are quite common, uh, are reasonably common now. Uh, natural plasmas would be things like a lightning. A lightning bolt is a pulse plasma. Uh, fluorescent lamps, uh, fluorescent tubes, lights, and some of the more recent energy efficient lights are plasmas. Um, a lot of la early laser systems were plasma based. And in the last 20 or 30 years in the semiconductor industry, plasmas are widely used now for etching material, etching sil silicon and for depositing metals um, to create the uh, silicon chips. Uh, they're also used in the fabrication of solar cells and other types of applications. So they become extremely important uh, in, in, in our world. Um, and sometimes people say plasmas are the normal state of matter. Uh, often hear people say 95 or 99% of the universe is in the plasma state. Um, that's a reasonable contention um, because most of the stars are in fact plasmas. Uh, between the, the stars and the planets, the space is filled with solar wind, um, the aurora. All of these are, 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 are normally in the plasma state. So plasma, in fact, in the university, in the universe, sorry, is very, very, it's very, very uh, common. So that's a brief introduction to plasmas. Thanks very much for listening. And I hope it's of uh, some use to you.